Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 374 of Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearmsauctions.com, where you set the price on guns, ammo, and accessories. I am one of your hosts, Cheryl Todd. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd. Our theme today is Second Amendment updates, and our guest is Dan Waz. Dan is a nationally recognized Second Amendment advocate and author of Good Gun, Bad Guy book series. He is a contributing writer for Ammo Land News, Daily Caller, Truth About Guns, and several other publications. Dan can be found on radio stations across the country speaking on behalf of gun rights and exposing the strategies of the anti-gun crowd. Dan is also the host of The Loaded Mic and has been a guest on Sean Hannity show, Armed American Radio, NRA TV, and many others. Wow, welcome back to this show, Dan Waz. Hey, you guys. Thanks for having me on the show. It's always good to see you. Hope everything is, is well out there um, on the other coast, or at least near the other coast. How's the weather anyway? It is warming up. It's like 95 degrees today. Oh, so it is March 25th and you, it's 95 degrees. We Pray turn the us. heater, we turn the heaters off, and then the next day you put the air conditioner on. Yeah. That's the way like, it is. That's like New York. You know, in the spring and summer in New York, you're you're you got the heat on in the morning, and when you're driving back home, you've got the air conditioner on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this is exciting uh to have you on again because you just announced. Uh, like as if you don't already have a stack of hats as tall as the ceiling that you wear, a new gig that you're doing. Tell us about that. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the Ammo Land thing. Um, so well, I've been writing for Ammo Land for a while now. So I've, I've been writing articles for them, among other things. Uh, but so they contacted me and they wanted me to sort of be a spokesperson of sorts for, for the, for them. And I'm doing uh, videos, usually about one a week uh, called, you know, it's, it's a second amendment update. So, which is, it's kind of cool. So, um, so that, that's just another thing that we're, that we're working on. And, and uh, we got a lot of stuff, a lot of production things going on and just tons of media and, as you guys know, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of media to be done in this realm that we, that we uh, are in. So, but yeah, so I'm really happy to be working with Ammo Land on a more consistent basis. Well, and you really, uh, I mean, you write beautifully, eloquently, precisely, and- Oh, stop. I know, right? Like, oh, I'm just, I, I'll, I'll hold back. Yeah. No, you really do. And it's so important um, because not everybody has that ability. You know, when I first started doing this, Danny and I first started doing this, it was kind of grew out of this need. Like I knew what I believed. I knew what I wanted to say, but I had a little bit more trouble actually articulating it and tying it to our constitution and our bill of rights. And it, it is a process and it's a growing process. And so to um, meet somebody like you and read your work and, and the way that you can not only convey your own ideas, but you take the words and phraseology and ideas of the rate of rights haters and then you kind of use your little decoder ring of logic and truth and knowledge. And then you go, look, people, this is what they're really saying. That is a true gift. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And as far as the writing goes, I really just write like I talk. That's the way I've always done it because I was never, I, I never considered myself a writer or an author. So what I would do is I would just write an article the way I would speak it to you. So just like we're talking right now, and then people seem to, um, they seem to relate to that pretty well. Rather than using a, a whole lot of big words and long elaborate sentences and things like that, I just, I think people just want to hear the information. They want to hear it in a way that they can comprehend it. So that's what I do. I just speak. I literally, sometimes the stories that I, the articles that I'll write will literally start off as me talking into my, into my phone. And I think it gives the best interpretation of what I'm actually trying to say. So as far as the, um, the psychology behind the anti-gun folks, um, you know, I, I've studied some of the, some of the, well, philosophers, I guess, some of the people who, who have looked into why people do what they do, you know, like, like Socrates, and you read some of that stuff, and uh, Sigmund Freud, and some of those, some of those guys really had an, a, a real insight into how people think, and why we do what we do. And you can learn so much by reading, by reading some of those books, and, um, and really understand when, when people say something, they, they, what they mean and, and, and how, they, how they approach life. Like when we talk about the anti-gun crowd, we talk about how they think about guns and their interpretation of guns and, and the fear of guns and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, maybe I do have a little bit of a, um, an insight into that mind um, but it's really just interesting to me. That's, that's how this all happened. It just became so interesting to see and understand how other people think about a topic. And it just kind of happened. So, Well, <clears throat> to our benefit, really. Um, and then, so you write really well. You decipher the other side really well. But your on-screen uh, presentation of this new... Um, Second Amendment updates that you're doing for Ammo Land. It's very polished. It's very professional. And um, the reason I think those things are important is because then the message is free to just come through. Sometimes if there's a, you know, something weird about your your lighting or, you know, we just, we struggle with that on this show all the time because we've got the, the Zoom connection. And sometimes, you know, you'll get something that happens and it pulls the, the viewer's attention away for just a second. Um, but when you have this very professional uh, uh, studio present presentation that you do, I think it just elevates the message. It elevates what we're trying to do on this side of the conversation to just be heard. You know, we're, we're so discounted all the time as a bunch of redneck backwoods fringe people and then to have you very professionally step in front of the camera and say hey here's what's been happening lately i i just i really appreciate it and oh. uh i think it's to the benefit of our side of the conversation well thank you and unlike right now sitting here in my office on zoom with terrible lighting <laughs> we do have we do have a, a, a studio where we do all that all that uh film work and um, and we, it's where we shoot our show and, and we do photography there. We do all sorts of stuff at the studio. So, yeah, so I'm lucky that I have all the equipment at my disposal and not a lot of people have that. So that helps too. It, it's, uh, but you're right. I mean, getting the message across is important. And when you have, you know, a, a, an internet connection, like we may actually have here in the next few minutes that cuts right. out on you and stuff like that. <laughs> It can it's happen. Terrible, but, you know, <laughs> when you, when you have the opportunity to work with good equipment, um, oh yeah, it definitely helps get the message across. Or good people. And good. People. Good people too. I, my son is my producer. His name is Danny Wass Jr. And he does all the filming, all the shooting, and he does most of the editing. He's just. Well, that's so funny because I joke all the time that I gave birth to my assistant, Cassie <laughs> Todd. Like I planned way ahead, like 32 years in advance that uh, I knew I was going to need somebody that understood these things called computers that didn't even, I mean, they existed when yeah. she was born, but barely. 
And now they're a, a part of our everyday lives. It's amazing. So, uh, so your son dives in there and helps you with that. That's awesome. Oh, he's, yeah, he's the best. And he was, uh, he was, he just does a lot of editing work and a lot of crazy stuff that I can't even comprehend. I call him the new and improved version. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. 2.0 or, That's or right. whatnot. Right. Yeah. Oh. Hey Dan, one of the stories that you covered is the failure of Florida, yes. the freedom state. Mm -hmm. according to DeSantis, mm -hmm. to pass constitutional carry. They failed to pass constitutional carry. I would expect that they had it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people thought that it was a, it was a no-brainer for them. Uh, but what happened is, even though uh, DeSantis said that, he even said it in public, um, that he would sign it as long as it made it to his desk, um, the Republican legislature the people involved um been dragging their feet now this is the third year in a row that anthony sabatini has brought this bill you know presented this bill and they won't even bring it to the floor for um for consideration so um <laughs> it failed again but there's some interesting things we we think part of the reason is because they they the same people who who stalled on this constitutional carry bill are the same people who uh, were behind and supported and wrote the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas bill uh, into, and signed that got signed into law. So this would kind of conflict with that. Uh, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas bill was something that we call red flag. We call it, um, it, it had things like um, you have to be 21 to purchase a gun. So, so now there's an age requirement. It had a three day waiting period, it had all sorts of stuff in it that it just is, is uh, limiting and uh, destructive to gun ownership and, and, and violates the second amendment for, for lawful gun owners. And it does nothing to stop crime or violence. So, but they supported that for po political reasons, I'm sure. And, uh, so now they've been stalling on this constitutional carry. So now we have 20, 23 states right now that are constitutional carry as of today. And um, with Florida, we, we, we're almost there. We're almost at a tipping point where we, there's only 50 states. And if we can get to 26, that would be just a, like a, a, real, uh, a real milestone. So you're saying that did the red flag law pass in Florida and you have to be 21 to, to purchase a gun? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was... That was part of the Marjorie Stoneman, I think it's called the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas um, School Act or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of it. Okay, and so you're also saying that the Republicans are the ones that are failing to vote for the constitutional carry bill. Yeah. And so that's a reminder to folks that just because a person has an R in their name doesn't necessarily mean they're for gun rights. That's right. That's un unfortunately, they are Republicans. Um Gun Owners of America did did a lot to try to from a grassroots level. The Florida the Florida chapter of Gun Owners of America was hard at hard at work on this one. They got petitions. They did all the grassroots efforts. They brought the petitions. They made the phone calls. They did everything they could, and the legislature uh, just they didn't want to they didn't do anything with it. They did nothing with it. And and there was a representative. Her name is Salzman. Last name is Salzman. She was actually caught on video saying that the reason they didn't want to, the Republicans in the legislature didn't want to do it is because it would conflict with the Marjorie Stoneman, Dum Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act. And she said, Representative Solomon, Salzman said that she didn't want to poke the bear. Those were her words. These are all their words. I'm not, I'm not adding any, or elaborating on any of this. People can read this and they can see the videos in my article at, Am at Ammo Land. Um, so she didn't want to poke the bear. So basically, everybody's playing politics. And um, unfortunately, Florida gun owners are left unable to get constitutional carry for the third year in a row. And the reason why our gun laws are the way they are right now is because everybody's afraid to poke the bear. And yeah. the bear? Like, who are we assuming is the bear? I the think ba the, the bear are, is the, re the Republican legislature. The people, uh, Br Brannon was one of their names. Um, but I don't have the article up, but um, the, the people in the, the Republicans in the legislature in Florida, that's the bear that she didn't want to poke. because she's, she's also a Republican. She's a representative. 
and she did. I guess she didn't want to make any waves with them. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So you who know, does she represent? I mean, yeah, aren't, aren't exactly. these supposed to be our representatives? Right. They represent us, not a special mm -hmm. interest, not a previously written law, not yeah. their fellow uh, cohorts, <laughs> us, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it, it's so upside down and backwards. And it really... You know, I've been really applauding from Arizona. We're a, a very free state. We work hard in Arizona. Uh, the Arizona Citizens Defense League gets the lion's share of the credit for our good, um, the, the fact that our, our Second Amendment rights, our rights to keep and bear arms are in such strong tact. Um, but even from here, I've been applauding uh, Governor DeSantis in Florida yeah. in you know, cheering on that idea that they're the freedom state and then something like this and it's not I his know. fault because if it didn't get to his desk it's not his fault but uh it, it i don't know it just kind of makes me go mm, not quite so freedom because if your responsibly armed citizens have to jump through hoops of permission they don't have to here in arizona right, right. And we yeah. work really hard to make sure that happens. So um, anyway, that's that's so unfortunate, but thanks for letting yeah. us know about that. Yeah, I know. And like I said, people can get all the details in that article on Ammo Land. Um, just search my name and Ammo Land and you'll find my articles. It, it's really a good read. Um, it's, un, it's just too bad. I don't, I, you know, you would think after this, after two years of, of playing this game, that the third year would surely, you know, there'd be no problem and go right through. But that's, that's the way yeah. it goes when people, you know, they don't necessarily represent us. They, mm -hmm. they represent themselves and their own families and their own pocketbooks and their own bank accounts. Um, I think a lot of these people, my opinion now, this is my opinion, right? I think a lot of these people just, just need the job, mm. frankly. And if they, they like get, the title, right? It's a feather in their cap. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that could be too. And they like the, the ability to to make these decisions that go that are statewide decisions that affect millions of people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do it, though, you, you need to represent the people that that voted for you. And yeah, how much better your job would be if how much more you'd like your job if you're actually doing what you're supposed to do? Well, yeah. it's so often here in Arizona. I mean, I got to poke fun at us now. I poked fun at Florida. We have people with the big R, Republican, on their chest with the cape waving in the background. And the whole time they're in office, they're pandering to people who didn't even vote for them, the Democrats. And it is it is absolutely maddening. <clears throat> We've got a thing going on right now with a, a banking bill that you know we're trying to you know pass to say, let's get, um, you know, let's make a law where you can't discriminate against a business because they're in the firearms business. We are in the most highly regulated, federally regulated kind of business there is. Right. And then we have these banking institutions that because they're virtue signaling, um, they are, uh, you know, refusing business, making it harder to do business. Right. We're working on a bill and it's Republicans that are trying to kill it. You know, it's oh, like, I know. Are you representing the banks or are you representing your constituents? You're a little confused right, right now. Um, yeah. I know the clock is ticking. I know you've got to get going. You've got another interview because you are such a busy guy. But um, when we talk about people who are, are you know, misusing their, um, their office and maybe tooting their own horn or whatever, uh, did you have Miss Lauren Snyder on yet? I know you were going to. I had her on this morning. Not yet, but we're, we are, um, we are, we're taping that show, uh, this weekend, as a matter of fact, very so, good. Yeah, so, she, and we're going to have her on. She yep. was just before you. And she's one that she testified. She's saying here, I, I, I walk with a cane. I can't run. I have to stand my ground. I want to use the yeah. tool of self-defense of my choice, which happens to be a gun. I'm a concealed carry holder. And one of our senators was like, well, I don't feel I as an able-bodied man, you know, talking I saw to that. an other abled uh, woman who has already been the victim of yeah. assault. Uh, well, I don't feel the need to you walk around with a gun. So why should you? When I saw that, 
that's a level of arrogance and a level level of i guess self self centeredness lack of awareness Mm -hmm. that i it's amazing that guy said that it's crazy yeah just because he doesn't feel that he needs it what about her exactly it's just that's a level of arrogance that we we could talk about for an hour well dan one of the the key parts about this is so let's say he had a bad day that day Mm -hmm. and he just messed up and Mm -hmm. you know they asked him to explain in a letter Mm -hmm. they asked to talk to him and he won't respond to them Hmm. so he must feel the way he feels and he blocked lauren on twitter so (laughs) that tells you right there he thinks that he is uh just above it all i'm assuming he's a democrat right he is absolutely a democrat and he's one of these unopposed i'm a proud democrat i'm a gun owner as well oh but they use that all the time uh uh-huh but they, they now this is a little thing that they do all the time they use that you know, I'm a gun owner. I'm a, they'll say they'll say they're a Democrat and they're a gun owner. Somehow, the being a gun owner, whether they are or not, we don't really know. We probably don't. not. They're probably right. lying, as far as right. I'm concerned. But um, that's supposed to give them validity right. in the conversation. That's like an instant uh, validity. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't buy it for one minute because you can you can own a gun. It could be grant your grandfather's old war rifle that sits up in the attic. <laughs> and you Dan. <laughs> or if, a water gun if right? they say they're I'm, a gun, a, I'm a gun owner because i have a water if pistol. they say they're a gun owner there's validity to that where the problem is i'm a gun owner and then but, but. the oh, yeah. but is where they cancels everything it's we, like we if i that. have a fight with cheryl and then i say i'm sorry but you i just right. blew it right <laughs> i just say i'm sorry i walk away and everything's cool right they, if they I say always but, say <laughs> They always say they support the Second Amendment, but but right, yeah, right. That don't means they don't really. But. That means they don't really support the Second Amendment. Right. They're just using that again to gain some kind of authority in the conversation or or, or validity or whatever. Absolutely. They're terrible. The, 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 the tactics. And if people want to read my book, Good Gun, Bad Guy, the ta- I talk about those tactics. So um, there's a ton of them. This is we're just scratching the surface on some of the tactics that they use. It's so true. Well, I'm excited for you to have Lauren on. And um, I know you've got to go, you've got another interview to do. But as we're going out, do talk to folks about those three gorgeous books right over your shoulder there. uh, The Good Gun, Bad Guy series, how people can purchase them, how they can follow all of the work that you do. Well, the Good Gun, Bad Guy series talks about the mindset of the anti-gunners, how they got the way they are and how, why they think the way they do, uh, the manipulation, the thought process, the propaganda, the terminology, all the stuff that goes into the anti-gun fear campaign. That's what I talk about and I expose it and I explain everything so people can see it, but, but recognize it when they see it on the news or when they see it wherever. And then I will also talk about the, um, how the media perpetuates the the fear campaign talk about the fake term gun violence and assault weapon and all that stuff we get into all the details and then talk about the uh, politics behind it why why what are they really aiming for what do they really want with gun control and uh, so those three books goodgunbadguy.com um read all literally read all about it because if we don't understand their tactics and their strategies we we don't have a chance in defeating them so um, I, I like to call the Good Gun, Bad Guy series the, the, the rule book that they never wanted you to see. I like awesome. it. That's fantastic. All right, Dan Waz, thank you so much for all that you do and uh, keep writing those books. Is there another one coming? Yeah, I've actually started Good Gun, Bad Guy 4. It's, it might wow. be a while. I've been kind of busy. So. Yeah, kind of busy. All right, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you so much. We will talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Bye-bye now. All right. Somebody ne- does need to explain. They need a book on that because all these politicians say they're for guns, but mm-hmm. they're really not. And, you know, there is a goal. The whole goal is to completely remove guns from the planet. Mm-hmm. Never happened, but that's what their goal is. And they're never going to be satisfied until they are. They'll say right now, I mean, there was a time that the uh, revolvers, the, mm-hmm. the small revolvers, the cheap Saturday night specials, we got to get them off the street. Why? 
Well, because Bobby Kennedy was killed with a cheap Saturday night special. So therefore, all of them have to be removed. Right. And when you looked at the bill that they had, cheap Saturday night special included a Colt Python, which was a $200 gun back then and is a $1,200 $1, to $2,000 gun now. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the, uh, the goal is just get rid of all the guns. That's, that's it. Mm -hmm. And as though that is even an achievable goal, right? right? I mean, there's no magic wand that's going mm -hmm. to disintegrate all firearms. Um, the knowledge of how to make a firearm, you know, it's, it's a fairly simple projectile launching device. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, you know, uh, it, it, they are childlike in, in their dreams and wishes that somehow they're going to um, completely absolve the earth of all firearms. So they tried it in Australia. <clears throat> they had a mandatory buyback. Yeah. They paid you a fair price, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not true, mm -hmm. but they paid you a fair price. The majority of the people gave their guns up and they still have gun problems and they mm -hmm. still have guns. Mm -hmm. It, you know, we've got to learn it's the people. Mm -hmm. It's we've got to work on the people. It's not the guns. Absolutely. And then, you know, taking Australia. And so then you flash forward, you have this pandemic that happened in the last couple of years. And then they start putting people, you know, in a concentration camp yeah. like environment, yeah. right? And and forcing them to give up all freedoms. And, you know, that's harder to do if people have an or else at the end of their no. Right. And also, you know, keep in mind, they don't have a constitution. We do. And we're still allowed. A, a lot of stuff to happen that we shouldn't have allowed oh to happen yes. and so i feel bad for them um they let the government take control they sure did. and that's a big mistake as you'll see with any in if you go back in history that they're trying to erase from us that any country that the government takes control turns to chaos mm -hmm. name a country that it hasn't mm -hmm. absolutely Absolutely. So. All right. Well, that was a great conversation. Thank you, Dan Waz, for uh, taking some time to be here with us today. Um, thank you to all of our amazing listeners. What we do here, it's fascinating to Dan and I. Yes. We've made some amazing friends with all the subject matter experts, the guests that we've had on over the years. Um, so we would enjoy doing this anyway. But the fact that you tune in and you share these uh, conversations around your dinner tables, right? Not only do you share them digitally online with your friends and your sphere of influence, which is huge. Thank you so much for that. But when you're sitting down talking with your, your friends, with your family, with your kids, that is where the rubber meets the road. That is but, everything. But you're, Thank you're you talking so like we're done. We are. I'm not done. Oh, okay. Well, continue. I just have a question. I mean, if you look back, we you see all these books mm -hmm. that are out there about guns mm -hmm. and why we should be able to have guns and all this other stuff. And you know, when you write a book and it's a true book, you're supposed to have facts in there and stuff that can be truthful. And if somebody was to challenge it, you could stand your ground and say, no, this is this is real, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And we have those books. And I was thinking, how many, why we shouldn't have gun books are there? Hmm. And if there are those books, could we stand there and debate and wipe them, the truth off of the, that book? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, I don't see any, why we shouldn't have guns. Well, we've got groups like the, you know, Moms Demand Action. They're the probably the most well-known. Cheryl, people that walk down Van Buren asking for action are <laughs> down in Las Vegas on the Strip. You went there. Moms you Demand there. Action. I'm not interested that in that, okay? The, the worst name for a group. It I, is. I just can't believe I mean, that some Last PR time I was in person... Vegas, I was driving down the road looking on the Strip. Hey, where are these moms that demand action? Well, there's one. Stop. I wouldn't go near that. Stop. Anyway. That's... Anyway, so wrong, but where, I apologize <laughs> to all of our listeners. But where are viewers. the books? Where are the books that show, you know, why we shouldn't have guns? Well, mm. whether they're books or not, and you caught me a little flat footed because I'm sure there are the arguments like Dan was is saying in right. his books, they're all an emotion based 
uh, argument and they're um, that that are against guns against right guns. right and that's and when what they I said. use stats they are always skewed right and they because you know you can make the numbers lie for you um and so you know they don't that side does not want to have a factual conversation right and that's why they can't that's why i don't think there are as many books is because with dan's books they're facts. You can look these facts up and you can see that they verify that they are true. Right. You look at the other side, the ones that are trying to take our guns away. What book could you produce that would be facts that would make somebody decide, well, hey, maybe we shouldn't have guns? Well, there aren't and any. And to your point, I think that, you know, we've probably said this a few times in the show that um, there are uh, there are people, lots of people that we happen to know who used to be against guns. Right. They were anti-gun for whatever reason. And then generally because something horrible happened in that's, their life or to someone thing. close yeah. to them, they realized, no, the power of being your own first responder is far outweighs any of the rest of this stuff, right? right? Um, but we don't usually hear, I'm sure there's someone out there, somebody who was always a proponent of second amendment rights and our constitutional rights, and then went the other direction and became anti-gun. That would be a real weird direction to go. Very, Even if something yeah. horrible happened in your world, it would be really weird to go to that place where suddenly you're vilifying this pen right. because this th <clears throat> pen might write something that'll get me in trouble or harm someone, right? Or start a war. Oh, so pens are right. dangerous or computers are dangerous because as I'm typing, I might, you know, all those same things. So there's one thing that's close to what you're saying. We, you're right. I've never met a person that was a gun owner that gave up his guns and to fight for anti-gun laws. But there are occasions where I've met people that gave up their guns because their wife is uncomfortable with guns. Mm -hmm. And instead of working with that, they just give up the guns. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is, it is it's really sad when we have somebody on the show that was a victim, that after they became a victim, decided they wanted to defend themselves. How many people out there that are not living today that were victims that would have mm -hmm. wished they had a gun, you know? Man, that's a great <clears throat> point. And then, you know, when you said that about, suppose that that was our story that you were a gun owner and when we got together oh clutch my pearls oh guns are so scary honey please don't have any guns around me don't have them in i've the seen house. people like that so you're doing a good job and then something happened to me mm -hmm. that you would have been able to right stop right. a bad guy or i think even worse what if something happened to you and then I'm standing there going, oh my gosh, if I'd have just had a gun, I could have saved your life. Right. And, and the big- How sick is that? Right. But you know, the whole thing is that this all could be prevented if just people would learn, mm -hmm. just just inquire about and, and, and just learn. Right. It, then and if then you decide you don't want it, maybe you'll think of something else. That's the thing. And then, you know, some people's homes, a gun just doesn't fit. Okay, that's fine. Right but it does fit in our home. So just, you know, don't take your world and try to impose it on ours. And anybody that says, well, that's what you're doing, Dan and Cheryl, you're out here saying that, you know, everybody should have a gun. No, we're not right. we're saying everybody should have the right to have a gun. Exactly. Right. And so we have totally grandkids living with us right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, one is what six, one's two, one, seven and one's seven two, and two. <laughs> seven and two. And we have guns all over the house, but you know what? Every single one of them is in a lock box. That's right. Every single one of them is in a lock box. That's right. um, it's, and it, we're teaching them Eddie Eagle. Right. And Eddie Eagle, what do they say? Stop, don't touch, run away, tell a grown up. And we've seen and them now do it. it's stuck in your and head they too. Do You're it. welcome. And they do it too. They the do. kids do do it. So anyway. Yeah. All right. Now can we wrap up? I think of something Was that else. your Dan's 
commentary. That was kind of a commentary, I guess. It's just used a, to do yeah. back in the day. I kind of miss those days. We should try to figure well, out how to bring that back. It, it, you know what? We couldn't do it now because it's so easy to get just completely angry about what people are doing to this world. They're taking our rights away from us. They're, you know, I, I'm not going to go on. They're trying. Not, They're trying. Right. We're, we're, we're gaining, actually. We're gaining, like Dan said. We're at the tip. States. We're at the tip right there. Constitutional carry. So once we get over 25, it's, uh, right? it's going to be California and New need... York are the only ones that don't have it. Right. Then we don't necessarily need that national reciprocity quite so much. Right. right? It'd be easier when to recognize. Have... Right. But if I think we'll ever get California and New York, I don't know. California and New York are going to have to become their own countries. They might, but I'm telling you, in this next election, after people have seen the dumpster fire of a dumpster fire of a dumpster fire that has been happening. But he's going to run again. There's talk of him running again. Como? Him? Como? New Como? York? In yeah. New York? Yeah, there's he's he's considering it. I don't know. I'm just talking about in general terms. The Democratic Party has been tripping over themselves doing so many things that even their their hardened supporters are going, mm, I don't know about that. Right. So um yep. yeah, this next election could have some serious consequences if our election counts for anything, which I'm praying it does. Uh, that's a different topic for a different show. We've got to it's get time out of here. to say goodbye, Cheryl. It is who we're going to pray for. Uh, well, first, I want to continue to say thank you to our listeners. Yeah. And if there's any uh, show that you want to go back and rewatch, including this one, you can go to YouTube, to Gunstreamer, or to the Opsland smartphone app. If you like to just listen to the audio only version because you're out riding your bike or on a long drive or something then go to our website gunfreedomradio.com click the on demand tab and do what dan binge listens to your heart's content darling beautifully said if you want to see photos and bios and links to all of the guests that we've ever had on amazing subject matter experts click the guest tab it is a tremendous resource and we don't hate it when you spend time there right. all right now until next time, we're going to pray for our, our nation. nation and for our leaders, even the ones that we don't like, Maybe. even the ones that are seeking to take our freedoms away. We are praying for them, Maybe not that yes. they become trillionaires and have a successful life, but we're praying <laughs> that they change their ways and become responsible Second Amendment Public freedom Public lovers, service. freedom lovers. Yes. Absolutely. Beautifully done, Dan. Now, yeah. some of those are going to need a lot of extra prayers. <laughs> All right. We're getting out of here before he launches again. I'm not going to say anything about the others. Until Dan. next time. Bye-bye. Be good to each other. Have a great week. And God bless. Bye.